And it's really fun having them. What I realized is there's so much prejudice against refugees, mostly because people don't know them. Lisa says she feels like she has her own personal chef as Wildande loves cooking. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan. And today we got to talk about yet another Brookline, Massachusetts family, which is right in the Boston area, taking in migrants. Now, I don't know how many of these families there are in Brookline and in this area, but I'm sure there's quite a few. And this particular story is a little bit different than the first one I covered. Now, in the first story I covered, there was a husband and wife couple. They took in the family. And the family that it took in didn't want to appear on camera. So you really didn't know too much about them. I think they said they came from Chile. That's going to be an important point we'll get to a little bit later. But in this story, it's one single woman in an apartment. And she brought in a migrant family. Also, I think from Chile, but they're Haitian. And I'll explain to you why I think that in a minute. But <laughs> what you heard at the very beginning is kind of the elephant in the room. It's the unspoken thing. These people, the migrants, are the new slaves. I've said it once, and I'll say it again. ABL, you can't compare them to slavery. They came voluntarily. They're not getting beat. They're not getting lynched. I understand that, but I said they're the new slaves, not the old slaves. There's no need for any of that unnecessary brutality, the whipping, the beating, the involuntary servitude. There's no need for that anymore. They'll come to the country voluntarily. They'll cross rivers, seas, oceans, whatever, to get to the USA. They'll be right there on the ground, on the floor of Logan Airport. You can have a random white liberal family come pick them up and bring them into their house. And they could do little domestic tasks. They can cook and clean and things of this nature all for free. Now, I understand you have live-in nannies or whatnot in the USA that are not illegal aliens, asylum seekers, or whatever, but last I checked, even if you're a live-in person doing certain tasks at someone's home, you still got to get paid aside from room, board, and food, and if I'm wrong, y'all let me know in the comments. These people are the new slaves, and this right here is an obvious example of why. Now, before I go any further, let's get into the actual news clip. If you want to see the clip in full without my commentary link, as always, will be in the description. If you're on IG, visit a link in the bio, go to the corresponding article on the website. But without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. Story you'll only see here on NBC 10 Boston. A migrant family from Haiti is sharing their experience. They're searching for shelter in the Boston area and then recently found a host home in Brookline. And now they're looking for jobs. As NBC 10's Aaron Logan reports, they say these last few weeks have been life changing. And the it's been an emotional few weeks for Wildande Joseph and her husband. First, sleeping on the floor at Logan Airport, then in Children's Hospital with their two-year-old daughter who got very sick. Me siento mal. Es ma muy difícil este tiempo. Oh. So obviously they're speaking Spanish, and if you know about Haiti, they speak French or French Creole, same thing. They don't speak Spanish in Haiti. So why are they speaking Spanish? Obviously, because they probably came from Chile recently and they've probably been there for the past 10 years or so. We'll talk about that a little bit more a little bit later. She felt bad as any mother would. Now things are looking much brighter as they've been welcomed into Lisa Hillenbrand's Brookline apartment. Tu niña es muy uh, alegre ahora. Sí, muy alegre. Cuando se levanta... In la mañana, she says, Hi, Lisa. Oh. Hi, Lisa. She says her daughter yeah, is very just, happy. Yeah. When she wakes up in the morning, she says, Hi, Lisa. And everyone starts the day smiling. It's a delight. And it's really fun having them. What I realized is there's so much prejudice against refugees, mostly because people don't know them. Lisa says she feels like she has her own personal chef, as Wildande loves cooking. Te gusta <laughs> la ocupación? Sí. sí. And Te gusta la ocupación? Do you like your job? See, yes. Your occupation, your job, whatever. In fact, her goal is to open up her own restaurant. Is, is that her job, to be the cook in the house? Because te gusta la ocupación? See, what's your job? Cooking and cleaning? How much you get paid for that? New slaves. Didn't I say it? Let me keep on going. 
The couple has their work permits and they've been taking English classes. They're open to work anywhere to save money for their future. In the meantime, they're enjoying their time with Lisa, their new friend for life and their daughter's new grandmother. <laughs> they are hardworking, they want to learn, they want to be successful, and I feel great helping, and I get to understand the refugee crisis from the inside. Uh, I bet you do. I bet you do. Lisa says she's so impressed by the number of people she's met right here at Brookline Town Hall meetings who've been stepping up and hosting families. She's hopeful more will do the same in the coming days and weeks. In Brookline, Erin Logan, and. So there we go. Shout out to Erin Logan. No relation. I don't know this lady. So shout out to her, though. Um, there's so much I want to say. As I said before, and as I'm going to keep on saying, these are the new slaves. This is the reality of the situation. Okay, cooking and cleaning, doing little tasks inside the home in exchange for room and board. Okay, now, of course, like I said from the beginning, there's clear differences. There's voluntary. You're not getting beat, lynched, hung, sold, or whatever. But it's the same general thing because if you're talking about a nanny, that it's going to live in and do that, they're going to cost a certain amount of money. Now, I'm sure she might want to have that for herself, a, a, a nanny, a maid, or somebody to live in their house, but it's going to cost, but you're able to get the cheap labor. This is generally what these so-called migrants do all over the country, working in the farms, working in somebody's house. Um, it, you know, the, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Things have become modernized, and we're not so much into the brutality of years past, but it's the same general thing that's going on. This is the reality of the situation. Okay, you're able to get a cheap maid or a free maid. Okay, you can stay in my house. I'm living by myself. I don't have any children here. Sure, you can stay with your husband and your, your, your little kid. That's fine. And then when the husband wants to go get a job, if that's what he wants to do, and then they could just move out, do their own thing, which is also a key difference from slavery. Ain't no moving out. Ain't no way I can just leave. Uh, rarely did that ever happen. But let's go back to the whole thing about them speaking Spanish. Remember, I said that they probably came from Chile. In the first story I reported about a family in Brookline taking in the migrant family, they came from Chile specifically. But they probably were living in Haiti first because after the earthquake in 2010, a lot of Haitians fled to other parts of the world. Many of them wound up in Chile and they had been there for like 10 years before they decided to try and cross over into the USA, okay? Uh, remember the whole thing with the, the, the so-called whipping incident back in 2021 when Joe Biden came in office? Remember this whole incident? Now, these were Haitians um, that came mostly from Chile, and then they walked through the Darien Gap and Guatemala, all of that, Mexico, and then tried to cross into the USA. And then they said that they were whipping them. They were not whipping them. These are not whips right here. These are horse reins, okay? But, of course, because they're black and you got guys that appear to be kind of light-skinned, might even be Hispanic themselves, with the horse reins, they said it looked like whips. And there was an investigation talking about patrol agents on horseback did not whip migrants, but used force in inappropriate language. The dumbest thing in the world. Saying, well, they didn't whip them, but they were mean. Okay? Ridiculous. But anyway, and then it says, one agent admitted to twirling the horse rein as a distancing tactic. Were they whipping them or not? They weren't. And if it was so bad, if it was so, uh, if they were mistreated so poorly, then why was this in 2021? And here we are, 2024, still getting Haitian migrants from Chile specifically coming into the USA. Obviously, people want to come here. They're coming in droves. And when you have these families in Brookline and other parts of the USA inviting them here, you're going to get more and more of them. That's just the reality of the situation. They're going to sign up to do little domestic things. Arrest Vic in real life in the USA. But as I close, I want to say this. Shout out to the new slaves. Shout out to the new slave owners. It is what it is. No, this is not the slavery of the 1700s, 1800s, 1600s in the USA or anywhere else in the world. But it's the same general concept. I want to be able to get cheap labor in my house, cheap labor at my company to maximize my profit. If I have a certain amount of money to spend on things and having an in-house made might be a little bit too much. Okay, cool. I'll just get some migrants, have them come in and do the same thing. 
Okay, I have a factory. I'm working in some kind of manufacturing. I'm building houses. I'm farming. An American might want $25 an hour, 50 an hour minimum wage. I saw that article crazy in California. They might want an extraordinary amount for minimum wage, but I'll pay these migrants $10 an hour to frame houses, rain, sleet, hail, snow, and they'll do it. And that is the reality of what's going on right now in this US of A. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? Do you think that I'm correct with my assertion about migrants being the new slaves? How do you feel about this arrangement they have out there in Brookline with the family in the house? Hey, I got my own personal chef for absolutely free. Aside from the room and the board of things of this nature, whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. You guys know where I'm at. This just proves my point. And I can find stories just like this every single day that prove my point because I'm right. These are the new slaves. It is what it is. Again, there's no need for the barbaric tactics of the old days when we're in modern times. You do the same thing you did back then in a different and more quote unquote humane way. OK, now the loser in the situation is us, the taxpayer, because there is an estimated cost of four hundred fifty billion U.S. dollars that we've paid for these so-called migrants, illegal aliens, asylum seekers, whatever you want to call them since 2022. So not a very good return on investment for us, but for these rich folks in Brookline being able to get a quote unquote free May in the house. Hey, it's a bargain for them, isn't it? Whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.